Good afternoon. This is Hadi Rangin, a member of IT Accessibility Team, and I am uh, delighted for this opportunity to have uh, uh, the time to talk with you about testing with screen reader. It is something that we I am being asked frequently. You know, uh, how can I test with the screen reader? Can we rely on a screen reader testing or not? That's why it's, uh, we have, we put that as a part of. I think by uh, or uh, we offer that twice in a year, uh, and then we discuss that and, and share with you the updates. Uh, so what we will be talking today. Uh, first, we discuss a little bit uh, the difference between technical accessibility and uh, and then the functional accessibility, and then how and then what we should test uh, when when it is about accessibility, uh, testing and evaluation, and talk a little bit about the type of uh, what the screen readers are available, and then uh, share with you how they work, and then. Uh, Finally, we will answer that if you can use the screen reader and followed by uh, a real demo of some testing. So I try to shorten this preamble stuff and get to real uh, accessibility testing uh, demo because I think it's the most uh, interesting part of the presentation. So when we talk about uh, the technical accessibility, uh, or what is technical accessibility? In technical accessibility, we focus on specific element. If they uh, meet the uh, coding practice and, and then guidelines. We, for example, check a specific button. If they can be uh, operated uh, via mouse, keyboard, assistive technology, and, and other means. And then we check the uh, the, the code against the standard, and then we said that, yes, this specific button or this specific element, it uh, meets a standard and it is technically accessible. Whereas in functional accessibility, we focus mostly on overall task. For, and then we we, uh, we really uh, come up with a functional task for a website or for our application. And based on the functional task, we can see that if we if a user can uh, complete the task from A to Z. There are a lot of examples that we can say that, you know, for example, when you are in a web uh, environment for, for, you know, like Gmail, when you are sending a, you know, where, where you have more, a lot of people are uh, using. Uh, we write down the list of the task that uh, possible task in that space. And one of them could be composing an email. Composing an email, you know, consists of many steps from finding or locating the compose button, clicking on it, and then going to the next page and then filling out the forms uh, like you know two fields cc field subject line and then you know body of the page and then running the spell check and then finally sending the application and then getting the confirmation that message has been successfully sent so all these stuff are when we consider for, for functional accessibility, we have to consider all these steps. And then and, and during that process, every step must be accessible. They are like a chain, they are connected to each other, and then only a complete chain provides a fully functional accessibility. In summary, or putting them together, uh, for all those steps that I mentioned earlier, um user has to be able to access each element in that lengthy process. Uh, it would mean that that uh, those elements must be technically accessible uh, so you could user can perform the tasks. Uh, in summary, technical accessibility is required and then uh, but it's not sufficient. So, uh, 
but both aspects are really necessary to to make sure that the task is accessible fully. So technical accessibility is something that we focus on the element itself and functional accessibility on the entire task. Now, with this aspect, when you are going to do some testing, there are some things that you will have to be ready. I mean, it is, uh, I'm not saying that it would require a good or a, a deep knowledge of HTML and then the web, how it works, but some familiarity with, with the web is, it can be extremely helpful. For our technical accessibility, which I mentioned that we check every element by itself, uh, there are a lot of tools that we can use and then uh, obtain the information. However, there is not uh, enough, I mean, accessibility tools. This is something that we have been discussing for a long time. You know, uh, they can catch, in the past, I said that maybe up to 30% of the issues, they could catch it, maybe using the AI, artificial intelligent uh, technique, maybe they can catch a little more, but definitely it does not substitute for the manual checking. We still need to check for manual testing. And a screen reader can help you uh, uh, with partial testing. I, I will tell you how and when we can use it, but it is not something that we should use screen reader for testing. Maybe I should not have said that right now, but you got my answer. <laughs> and then when you are doing the testing, remember, we are not checking just for the technical accessibility. We want also check for functional accessibility. We want to make sure that user can perform from uh, the, all those tasks defined in a, in, a, in, a, uh, in, a, in a task from A to Z effectively and reliably. So in, uh, when we are testing that, so we all users should have uh, almost equal uh, uh, experience. You know, if, if a task test ta it takes um, five minutes for you to do that, for Hadi as a person with, uh, as, as a blind person, you know, it should not take, you know, 100 minutes. Uh, I can understand some overhead, but not at that level. So unfortunately, we see that many developers that they focus solely on functional technical accessibility and they do not consider uh, how difficult it is to uh, to complete the task uh, with with uh, as a non mouse user. And then when you are getting to do, doing the testing, make sure that you do not really fall in the trap, get lost in the task, and you know, focus on the big item. You know, uh, issues. So what we test, again, before we start that, you know, I, I should say that we should not touch screen reader testing before completing the keyboard testing. It is so essential. Uh, and then many uh, well, screen reader functionality depends very much on keyboard accessibility. By testing keyboard accessibility, then I think everybody here in this room can do that. You eliminate a lot of uh, issues. If you see that, for example, you know something is not working with keyboard, then you can, uh, uh, you know, with high probability, you can say that you know that task is not accessible for a screen reader either. So when we start with the testing. Like as I said, we, fuck, we do that first, the uh, 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 keyboard testing. So keyboard consistency is one of the first items we see, see that, you know. So uh, consistency, in, I'm sorry, can consistency and application. Sure. So we'll check for the visual consistency. I mean, the, I mean when we go from one page or from sub page to another sub page, you know, are they, they do do they give you the feeling to give the, the identity here you are on the same domain. And then the way how they implement those elements. I mean, the typical example that I usually use is this. I see that you know from one form in the same domain when they are asking for the gender information. 
they use, for example, radio group. That's that got, for example, gender. I mean, it's a male, female, or don't want to disclose, something like that. You go, you go to the same domain in different form, and you see that you know they are using a combo box. The reason for the functional consistency is, is, is this: that people t uh, have to spend time to familiarize themselves with the page. For sighted user, this is this happens on the, on the fly, but for screen reader user who see only one element at the time, it takes time. So we want to make sure that uh, once user familiarizes with, with certain element implementation of the page, we remain consistent uh, uh, throughout the domain and then we don't confuse them by uh, different implementation. Proper use of elements. So a lot for a lot of developers, um, link and buttons are the same, but they are not. They are designed for a different uh, thing. They have, Button should uh, trigger a function, and then uh, links they sh it, uh, should take you to a different page. So by by mixing them up, you you confuse user with their expectation. For example, you know when I'm clicking on the link, I'm expecting that I am redirected to a different page, but when something nothing happens and that link is just triggering a function in the same page, then I am confused. So you see that this is very easy to confuse us. Keyboard operability. So when you are doing the keyboard testing, that I would love that everybody develops that skill. It is so simple. You just use your keyboard. You do not need deep knowledge of keyboard testing. You just need to know that, that you see the focus. At any stage, you as a tester, sighted user, should be able to see the, the focus indicator. You should not even always blame your eyes. Oh, maybe I, my, I, my eyes getting is weaker, or I need a new glasses, or, or I didn't sleep <clears throat> well, or uh, my screen, I need a bigger screen. Yeah, the, this might, they, they might be a problem, but the real problem is the focus indicator is not there you should be able to see the focus indicator at any stage. So you define the task, and then uh, what, what I would like to mention that. You tap through the page, you know, tab key is one of the key elements that takes you from one, one element to another element, and, uh, and then you should be able to see that. You should press the Enter key to trigger that link or function, and then, uh, and, and then go through all those interaction uh, as needed. You know, if you have, for example, you, when you are on the radio group, you should use your arrow keys. If you go through a combo box, you know, you have to use arrow up and down to open the combo box and go through the option and press enter to select it. And, and it is really so simple. And then a space bar usually for check or unchecking uh, the checkbox. I don't remember more stuff that you need just to, to do that. But while you are doing, you have to be able to complete the task. Complete the task from A to Z. Do not cheat and then use your mouse and then you know move the focus to where you want. Because navigation and interaction, this is something that you do with both with the keyboard. If you are you have to travel 60 times from A to B to perform the next action. Then you can ask your question if the, the, the task is functionally accessible. Yeah, technically, yeah, you might be able to do it. But if you have 15 steps to complete the task and every time you have to press uh, so many number of uh, tab key to uh, to go from a from one element to another element. Then you can question the functional accessibility of the application. And as you tap through that, you always have to pay attention to the logical order. So if you tap through the application, if you see that the the key the tab uh, the focus indicator does not match your expectation, that means that is broken. Okay, That is a, a broken and you have to consider it as a keyboard accessibility issues. And then go, don't get 
confused with the shortcut keys. A lot of our developers, including our Microsoft and many, many other applications, they rely on keyboard uh, on the shortcut keys. Shortcut keys are can be extremely helpful, but they are not primary element of uh, accessibility. Shortcut key can be good and useful as long as they are meaningful and there are maybe a handful of them and they are consistent. But when you go through the shortcut key of some of these applications, you will see, I'm not exaggerating, over hundreds of shortcut keys in a different uh, uh, modif with different modifier keys, you know, you know sometimes the Alt Shift, Alt, you know, Alt Windows key, Alt Control, or Alt Control Shift, and and again, it has no no uh, uh, way that you can associate with that function. So uh, there is a limit how many you can do it, and if they are consistent uh, uh, or not. And then again, do not buy. Uh, do not fall into that trap. Shortcut keys are not keyboard solution. Aria landmark. It is a, one of the most important uh, thing that for a screen reader user, um, there are a lot of tools that we, uh, these accessibility tools, that they can show you what landmark uh, how the Apple landmark are uh, the, the defined or designed. Landmark or, or regions are logical. It is a way to deliver, to convey the logical um, um, component of the page. You know, when, when you are taken to a random page, immediately you can identify that they, this is a la there is a banner on the top, there is a navigation. On the left, and there is a main area, or there's a search and footer section. You, as a sighted person, can immediately see that. But for a screen reader user who see only one element at a time, this outline, this they don't have access to this visual <clears throat> clue. Aria region, Aria landmark, is the solution for that. Practically. I mean, when they we have element container element on the page, and then you that you see something as a like a looks like a banner section, that behind that banner, but behind that box, it is a kind of we call that an element, a div div element, and then aria regions is a way to give a semantical meaning to that container. So when Hadi as a screen reader user comes here, he can see, oh, these are the major component. There is a box labeled as banner. There is another box labeled as navigation. There is another box like a main and then um, and, and so on. There are seven predefined regions in our, in, uh, in the spec. And then, um, that is something that we, we use uh, to understand the overall outline of the picture uh, of, of the page. So those are stuff that you see immediately. What is what, and then what are the major component? We have to we have to rely on ARIA regions to understand the big component of the page. So we will show. I will show all of them uh, in a demo. So when we talk about that, you know, we want to make sure that the integrity is important. You know, once you start using these uh, regions, we want that you are consistent from one page to another page. <clears throat> and there is no content outside these regions. So because once you provide this box model or whatever we want, we call the regions, we are looking for the content inside the region, these boxes. But if you put in, in a content outside this stuff, it would be a little difficult to discover them. And of course, you know, if you have, uh, uh, you can name these regions, and then um, uh, then then it is important that you use meaningful um, labels for these regions so user can identify with them. Heading, you heard. I'm pretty sure many of you have heard that before. Headings 
are a means to structure the content. The difference between heading and then uh, uh, the earlier uh, item uh, regions are regions provide must, uh, give you information about the structure of the application, about the website, of the framework itself, and headings are reserved to provide information <clears throat> or provide the structure about the content. So, in the heading. The, we have in HTML, we have six level of heading, heading one through six. And then the recommendation is that we use one heading one per page, which come away the, the main information about the page. And then anything underneath should be heading two and beyond up to six. It is important that we use this heading in a hierarchical word, way, and they should be meaningful and it should be complete. What does it mean, they're complete? So uh, first I go with the previous item where I said that, you know, meaningful um, uh, or, or, or hierarch hierarchical. We cannot have a heading three without prior heading two. It is like a book chapter. Uh, you know, when you go to see the back of the book and then table of content, you have a chapter one and chapter 1.1, chapter 1.1, 1.1, and so on. And you see that each, when you go farther down, there's, you build that relationship, you know, that chapter 1.1.1, it is a child of the parent, you know, 1.1. And 1.1 itself is a chapter of previous. Okay? So you build this hierarchy using the heading. Heading 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And when you are creating these head, meaning the headings, you, know, you, want, you want to make sure that they are meaningful. You know, if you just use a few keywords, you know, you know, that might not make sense to your audience, you know, then you probably want to rephrase it. Completeness, it means you cannot just say that, hey, I take, took care of the heading by putting a few headings on your page. Headings should provide a good outline of the entire page. So by providing heading only for a selected section, yes, you did a good job, but it is not complete. You have to provide the headings for the entire document. Entire page. Next, grouping of elements. What does it mean? You know, uh, visually, I mean, I'm talking about the ordered and unordered or definition list. So, grouping element is really nice. If you do that correctly, screen reader user, user can see that they are approaching a list. Screen reader reads the information from, doc, uh, from, from browser, and they know that, you know, that there is a list here. So before we navigate into the list, we see that, oh, I am entering a list of five items. And then I can, can go through it. If you do not, if you just uh, do not use the proper coding and use your, and, and try to mimic the list, as much as you know, your uh, fake list looks like a real list, it does not provide the comfort, uh, the necessary information. So, in order to, to benefit from this list information, then you have to provide the right coding. So, for both ordered and unordered list, so we need a proper coding. For the graphics, I think this is a you know a stereo, uh, you know this is something that everybody has heard about it. You know we we say that we need the meaningful uh, the text information for the graphics. If some uh, graphics, if you consider that you think it is just a stylistic effect, there are ways to mark them as a decorative. And then once you say that it is decorative, you know then a screen reader do not even render that. So we are not overwhelmed with these noises. But when you see a, text is, a graphic is informational, we need to provide all text. And then I, I have to, uh, I've been pushing for that or promoting people, you know, 
to have those the real author uh, or authors to provide the alt text. If you are a content creator and then somebody hands you a, 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 a information and it has graphics, I think it should not be the job of the content creator to provide the, the alt text. The author should provide that because he or she is the only person who knows that what they wanted to convey with that graphic. It doesn't mean that we should not try it, but but, but I think the best person is that person uh, is the author. With the form controls, you know, we see if there is. Uh, I don't see many pages these days without form controls. There are some, a lot of them, uh, on on the web. And then the fact that we see form controls. Oh, by the way, let me say the form controls. We are referring to text boxes or input field or text area. We are talking about radio group, check boxes, buttons, or toggled buttons. Uh, but did I miss anything? And, and then, you know, more. more. So I, I think that I, I covered most of them, the, the basic them. So when we are interacting with the form element, uh, it is important that we provide the proper label with the form control. Otherwise, we would not we wouldn't know that what, what what we are dealing. If you have, for example, two text fields, you know, one of them is, for example, first name with this last name. If I tap to those area, it just would tell me it is a text box. But if do we do not have the if, but if we provide the proper label for each of the text boxes, you know, then when I get to either of those boxes, it tells me first name or last name or whatever the field it is. So form elements or form labeling is really a key accessibility uh, factor or problem from, from whatever perspective we see that. And it is a failure, a total failure it's if, if a form control doesn't have the proper labeling. And, and, and tools, uh, accessibility uh, the testing tools or inspector element, they provide all of this information. This is not something that you need to know anything about the screen reader to, uh, to, to test it. And then uh, part of the form controller, we usually talk about the error handling and you know, how you convey a warning, how you convey an error, how you help user to, uh, to uh, recover from an error. And then, of course, a lot of dynamic widgets. You know, if, if you are, I think, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure we all are using uh, very difficult, or, I mean, very complex application. I mean, just consider the workday <laughs> or teams. <laughs> and, you know, each element is not just a simple element. This is a combination of the multiple elements, which makes it. Hi, a... Hadi. We're at the 130 mark. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so it is so important that we uh, we uh, uh, test the, the form elements, and then of course then we get to the dynamic uh, widget that a lot of things are happening in the, on the page dynamically, and uh, how we convey these changes to users, including user with screen reader user. So I think I need to go faster. So when we get to uh, screen reader. I mean, in the, in the Windows world, we have NVDA, JAWS, and Narrator. Uh, Narrator is a built-in uh, built-in screen reader from Windows. Uh, for many many years, they were not uh, reliable stuff, but recently they have done. In the past years, they Microsoft uh, spent a lot of resources on that, made it better. Uh, JAWS is the uh, one of those screen reader that is used in North America, uh, I think more than any other screen reader, and NVDA is a free one. Um, and then, uh, uh, you know, uh, JAWS was for many years, this was the dominant one, but NVDA is catching up with them. In Mac, uh, we have VoiceOver. And then in uh, Android, we have TalkBack. And then uh, iOS is also voiceover, functionally very similar. What you see on the screen is the 2021 uh, 
screen reader user uh, screen reader program usage it is they haven't updated that uh, result but as i said for many years jaws was the dominant one but uh, okay, nvda is catching up with it so one more, one more thing before i uh, go to the next stages i wanted to emphasize that screen reader is made for blind user. So the manufacturer are trying to help blind user, not you as a for testing. And they have hundreds of function that uh, that helps you blind user to obtain the information. And then uh, so some of them are algorithm that helps them helps the uh, screen reader user to uh, to identify some of the information uh, that it is not apparent to user. Uh, for example, if the form label is missing, JAWS is trying to uh, guess uh, the label for that. But this is what, is what JAWS is doing. It doesn't mean that other screen readers are following the same pattern. Okay, So if, uh, if that, that's why I always say that do not rely on screen reader user, uh, screen reader testing because you get a lot of false positive results. You see here the screen reader reads the label, but indeed what you hear is just that the, the fact is that JAWS is guessing that, not programmatically is in the application. So a screen reader you know, have two major modes, browse mode and then interaction mode. In browse mode, we try to uh, uh, understand the uh, content, the page by itself. Um, everything we said, the way that we communicate is, is uh, with, uh, everything from left to right, top to bottom is linearized. We can see the page, uh, uh, for every element of the visible element on the page, uh, including those areas that just just text. So again, we see these elements, these text information, graphic uh, 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 labels, uh, and so on, but we do not know their positions. We know just that they exist, but we do not know in what order they appear uh, and then uh, where they are located geographically on the screen. And then uh, this is what we use for uh, uh, discovering of the page and then understanding where is what. Uh, but when we get to the interaction, we have to switch the application to a different mode. So in that mode, practically we tell the screen reader here, do not capture anything. And then anything that we type is uh, passed to the application. In the, in the browse mode, anything that we type is considered, is intercepted by a screen reader as a command. For example, if I, in a web environment, if I type letter E, screen reader catches that and says, oh, he wants to go to the next edit box. If I type, for example, um, uh, you know, X, oh, it's, oh, he is looking for the next checkbox. Uh, it, it helps me to navigate in the page, but if I want to interact with that checkbox, then I have to leave that that mode, and then then a screen reader uh, do not intercept anything, and then everything that I type is passed to the application, uh, like you are using just keyboard. So the final answer is that yes, you can use the screen reader for selected testing. If you are on, if you know, uh, you know, some of this limitation, right? Okay. And then please do not fall into that trap. Let's get there's something like JAWS accessibility or NVDA accessibility. We do not have such term. So either a page is accessible or admits, again, we tested not against JAWS. We tested against the standard, the big act. Uh, 2.2 uh, guidelines. Okay, then again, uh, the, uh, emphasize and that, you know, uh, for a lot of stuff, you have to do that manual testing. 
And then and if you are not an expert screen reader user, please do not use that unless you, know, you really know what you are doing. So this slide will be shared with you. There are some basic commands for a screen reader if you want to play with it. it we have listed, I think, NVDA, JAWS, and then VoiceOver, I guess. We will share with you. We don't have to go through all of them. Uh, but you will have them, and then you can see a summary of that. So I have preloaded these uh, pages that we can go to demo section. Okay. Now I am wondering how I should that, do that. So you can hear my jaws. So let me disconnect my headset. Okay. I'm slowing down, turning up. It is, I, I hope everybody has coffee on, on the side so you don't fall asleep. <laughs> so, and then I'm going to show some of those features that I discussed earlier in action. We Visited current accessible university. We have developed this site just to demo accessibility features. We have an accessible version of this page as well as a very inaccessible uh, version of it. This page that I am on is the accessible version. So I am going to uh, show some of those features so you can see how they help me. I told you, you know, when we get to a page, the first thing that the main like everyone else get to a page is you want to know that how the what are the big information of the page what are the big uh, major uh, component of the page <clears throat> and then uh, remember the regions that I told you area regions or landmark and the screen reader gives me an option I mean get a, a, a function to view that. You as a keyboard user, you do not need my tool. You can go to these uh, accessibility testing tools that I am sharing with the slides uh, at the end of this presentation. <clears throat> you can download them and then uh, uh, use them. And we will be glad to show you the, some of those basic functions and then help you to get started. But again, you do not need screen reader to test that. So. I'm going to show the screen reader. I mean, asking JAWS to show me the ARIA regions. Document regions dialog, regions tree view, banner oak one, demo site region national zero, one item. I hope the speed is not too fast. One, demo site menu navigation, one of one. Is it, is it can confirmation somebody? Uh, is it too fast, too slow, too low? <clears throat> Does it mean everything okay? <clears throat> yeah, sounds good here. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate that. So, <clears throat> I am closing the subregions. <clears throat> so, my screen reader is telling me <clears throat> that the page consists of four regions and a region called banner. A main menu navigation, the term that you see it to the end of that, it tells me the type of the regions. As I told you, we have pre seven predefined regions. I, I, I did not mention them. One of them is banner. Another one is navigation. Then this is a main. <clears throat> then we have complementary. Uh, we have forms. We have search. <clears throat> we have footer uh, and, and so on. And then it tells me, you know, they have a, you have a banner, main menu and I have a main menu uh, navigation region, main closed. and the main, which is like a main region, and it says the closed, it means it has sub-region that I will expose it in a second. Apply now, complementary information. This is a complementary region. Content information. And the content information, I think, is one of the ugliest words for footer. <clears throat> but this is something that they came up with. Apply now. Make. When I go to region, it, it tells me they have it con contains other subregions. 
And it has a slideshow carousel video play region. And, and a video Zero player. And, and, so. and then Slide. if I want to navigate to that place, I mean, first remember, it gives me an immediate uh, over, uh, outline of my application and the major component in it. So it helps me not only to understand the regions, it helps me also to navigate to that. So using this function of the screen reader, when I am, for example, on a slide, slide a slideshow carousel, I can press enter, enter, and my screen reader focus is right there. So, and then I can read down from this from this place. I'm sorry. <laughs> that. That is the marketing <laughs> telemarketer, but <clears throat> <clears throat> I think one more ring and then they put over. The whole grid building reflected in the glass exterior of a modern building slide. No, they are persistent. <laughs> okay, done. <clears throat> About school. And then uh, the next things that we as a screen reader, uh, would love uh, we, we, we we utilize it you know, after understanding the uh, uh, the regions is the content. I mean, we want to see the content and and remember, I mean, headings. We said that this is the tool that we use for uh, to understand the content. So a screen reader gives me a function, you know, to list the headings. So what we have here is a list of the headings. And the numbers that you see on the right, it shows the level of that. For example, the first one that I'm on is the heading one. And then again, we always start with heading one, which conveys the main title or main heading of the page. Welcome, call two. And welcome is a heading two. This is very logical. Bienvenido, call two. This is another one, heading two. Getting spotted barriers, call two. Another major section of the same level, heading two. AU involvement trends, call two. Another heading two. AU video, call two. And video more. player, call three. So, but when I get to the heading three, I know that based on this structure, this heading, Media player. this or subsection, is a child AU of video. this guy. So, by providing the heading structure, you give me all the, not only what, what is on the page, you help me to understand the relationship is of, of major and subsection. And besides that, I can press enter, enter. And, and navigate to that section. So it is like you looking at the book or looking at the article or what the page, and then you just see this heading and subheading and skim through it. And then you know, then then you move your focus to that section that you came for. So that is the power of regions and headings. Other good stuff is that you know this is maybe uh, another funny stuff that I, maybe I can show you. Yes, I can show it. Yeah, uh, we have multi content, uh, multi language content here. You know, here if I go, want to go, bienvenido. I mean that is uh, sounds Spanish, but it, uh, you know. But when I get there, I am outside that region. I am arrowing down to that Spanish section, and then see that the content change. Heading level two, bienvenido. Accessible universal left para new a right para this universal. Oh, sorry, it didn't work. <laughs> I did expect that the change, but uh, I think we had recently some changes here in this section, and I have to do but. Uh, it it should have switched to to a Spanish. No, it, it didn't. Am I using the right screen reader? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think this is the problem is the code, and then we will fix it. But uh, uh, but again, but it it should have changed the language because uh, we were supposed to use the proper language attribute for this section. And then, which uh, automatically tell the screen reader, "Hey, I'm in Spanish," and the screen reader you now can change that on the fly. Escape. I told you about Accessible graphics. 
I am checking the list of the graphics here. Select the graphic dialog. List one, list view. That's an old brick building reflected in the glass exterior of a modern building. Creative Commons license. An old brick building reflected in the glass exterior of a so, modern building. Providing an alt text is an art. Uh, I think my colleague, they, they provide some webinar on it, on it. And I just strongly encourage everyone to go that. It is really not. Uh, it, it requires some training, how to provide alt text, a, an effective alt text for a graphic. Yes, there are sometimes it has, uh, some, you know, gray area, hey, is this the graphic is, uh, you know, uh, alt is, is uh, you know, informational or uh, the decorative or stylistic. Uh, yeah, sometimes they don't, they don't, it, it, there is not a strong opinion always. You know, for example, I see that here two students talking in front of, for example, a specific uh, hall. Um, is it informational? Yeah. If you ask me, no. But some people might have some uh, other opinion. But definitely, there are graphics that are stylistic. You know, like a borderline, like you know, some divider, those stuff, and those things. Uh, they definitely needs to be labeled as a stylistic, and then uh, the code is so simple. You see, alt tech. I mean, the attribute alt equal code code with no space, nothing, and then uh, that sets the alt text to be a, the, a stylistic graphic. And when a screen reader sees that, uh, they ignore it because it's a very uh, that that is how it should, it, it works. I uh, uh, can take also with the form. I have. There is also a form here. And then let's, uh, let us listen together when I tap to it. Apply now. Complimentary region. Name edits required as pop up. Land. It said the name edit pop up. Enter. Name edit required as so it means, you know, I can interact with it. I said, Adi. Adi email required as pop up. Pattern at uh, required. Okay, that is another field that said that it is clearly said that email. And country colon edit land. Country. USA desired major left parent as right parent colon group list with six items. Computer science checkbox not checked. It specifies the, uh, the uh, you know, a checkbox element. I read the label. And it told me the state of that. So for um, for these um, elements on the web, we usually need the role, uh, you know, the attribute, uh, the the role name and the state. So it should it tells me this is a checkbox. Computer science checkbox not checked. Computer science checkbox not checked. Computer science is the name. Checkbox is the type of the element, and not checked is the state of it. So I press the space bar, space checked. it checked that. And when I ask my screen reader to read it back to me, computer science checkbox checked. It said a computer science checkbox checked this time. So it means it, like a computer science, the name checkbox is the uh, type of the, 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 the type of element and then, then checked is the state of that. So, and then if I tap forward, engineering checkbox not checked. So economics checkbox, physics checkbox, not psychology, Spanish check, security, West submit button. Submit button. And, and alert error, error. Your answer to the security question was not correct. Please try again. Security question group. If a cow is purple, what color is it required? <laughs> yeah, you see that? Did, these are uh, accessible version of, of this site. As I said, we have a link inside this page. That takes you to the inaccessible version, and then you, when you check, to have the you want some fun activity, you know, you can go there and see that you know how little information you get from the page. If a cow is purple, what color is it? Edit required. Okay. If a cow is purple, what color is it? Edit required. I I make a mistake, purposely. Why? Right. Submit button. Enter security question group. If a cow is purple, what color is it? Edit required. White area. Your answer to the security question was not correct. Please try again. You see that these are because of the dynamic stuff that I told you earlier. 
So this is a lot of things are having uh, some dynamic events are happening on the page, and it is reading the content to me. It is, uh, my focus is just on that edit box, but the 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 person who wrote this app, which was all Ethereum, I mean, he, they he he made it accessible by providing an ARIA live and communicating uh, that error message to me. Uh, is that that purple? Purple enter. Thank you. Your application has been received. And this is a confirmation. So again, when you are testing that, make sure that that all the forms must have a label. And then, uh, then uh, uh, also, uh, you have to be able to recover from the error messages, and you have to give a confirmation that the the site, I mean, the the, the form has been submitted successfully. I'm, I'm pretty sure you have seen that. Sometimes you go to a complicated form, you submit, and you get back to the landing page. You have no confirmation. <laughs> Did I submit that correctly or not? Did it go through or not? Because you don't have any confirmation. Submit button. For region state. For so PC. I'm back okay. here. 153 PM. I'll show you one more thing with the table. So I'm telling my screen reader, take me to the next table. Wrapping the top 11 columns and four rows. The following table shows undergraduate and graduate enrollment over a two-year period. This is a table. Remember when we are navigating table, we see only one cell at the time, one cell data at the time. So it is important the relationship between cell and, and then row and column header are defined and implemented correctly. Otherwise, we will be hearing just the cell and not knowing what that cell is associated with. The following table shows a so when I last row two, last year computer science column two, undergraduate fourteen eighty graduate graduate column one. So I hope you can hear that. Last year computer science three hundred ten column two. So again, last year computer science. Last year English eighty four. Last eight. year English, but there. You know, the number, I mean, I am just on this on the cell where it says that 84. But the screen reader is obtaining information through the browser DOM and reads the relationship between this cell and, and, and corresponding column headers. Last year economics, 273, column four. So last year physics, 69. Last year five. physics, we have 69. Last year psychology, 312. And six. so on. This year computer science, 300. Now we get to seven. this year, right? And then it, it clearly said that this year English 64 and then again this is the beauty of the accessible coding practice and then we have a lot of uh, resources to share with you and, and then I'm pretty sure I, I think uh, uh, Anna Marie will send you all those people who registered their slides please consult the resource section of it with uh, some of these tools and then something that I wanted also to share with you, uh, we have uh, we have been celebrating Global Accessibility Awareness Day since 2017. And then this is a day that we focus on accessibility and then we have a lot of fun activity. And uh, please watch for the communication through uh, our mailing list, liaison or other list. Uh, about that event, and we would love to see you there and have the chance to uh, talk with you or uh, uh, see you participate in some of those activities. That's it so far, what I had to share with you. I can go for another two, three hours, but I think your light time is limited. I stop here and ask if you have any questions. From accessible technology services to everyone, colon slides and video will be posted to the website in about two weeks, colon HD. I have a question, Hadi. This last example that you have shown us, um, and it says last year, that spans four columns, and then underneath that it has computer science, engineering, etc. Are those um, table headers, those two rows, both table headers? Correct. They are associated with two table headers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Because you know, in, in table, 
uh, uh, realm, we are sometimes dealing with a simple table or unified table. We have fixed yeah. number of columns and rows. That is a, has a simpler technique. You can sure. use just, you know, use TH with the, for the column header so and then use F. calls. I mean, uh, uh, well, you know, it's a very, very basic stuff. But for this, this table, which has multiple call span, then we have to use a slightly different technique and each cell must be connected to the relevant column headers. Yes. So then when the screen reader sees that it is a span, it continues to read that first uh, table header when it reads the one below it. It sounded like. Depending on how the, it has been implemented. Yes. I mean, okay. if you go to H data set, you, you will see that the ID of those column headers that it oh, reads. I see. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Questions? And I should also mention, if you have some pages uh, for testing uh, or website or application, uh, we will be glad to meet with you and then uh, walk you through that and then testing together. And I have one more announcement. Uh, we, some of you might be aware of the monthly web accessibility and usability meetup that happens usually on the second Thursday of each month. And we are running that for almost a decade. And then uh, tomorrow we have, a, it, it actually our next one is tomorrow at 10. And then I invite him, everyone to join us. It, the topic is very interesting. It is about using, uh, alt text with the picture or with the photos of the providers, uh, how much information you can provide or what you should provide in your alt text for uh, uh, pictures of provider. Uh, our, our colleagues from UW Medicine are driving that discussion and we would love to see you there. It is, I think, interesting for everyone. Questions? One fifty nine p.m. Uh, Anna Marie, uh, Andrea, do you have any questions? Uh, do you see any questions in the chat? We do not have any questions in the chat. We do have a couple of thank yous. Oh, thank you for coming. I appreciate that. It's always a pleasure having the opportunity to talk to you. So if not, then uh, I wish you all uh, a wonderful rest of the afternoon and then talk with you next time. And thank you very much for coming.